Hello, this eHelp video is about ESI WebPhone that is available on ESI's eCloud service. This video in particular is going to talk about how to place calls from WebPhone and how to receive calls from the WebPhone. All right, so I am logged into eConsole because this is where you launch your WebPhone. So you go over here to the upper left corner um, or your left bar, and I'm going to click on my name. And you'll see that I have very options here. I am going to choose web phone and it will launch in a separate window. This is the default window, which is its minimized view, but there is actually a maximized view that um, I find that people learn web phone a lot easier through that view. So I'm going to switch to that, but just know that what we're talking about is also all available in here, whether you're minimized or maximized view, you have all the same options. So I'm going to go up here in the title bar of this window and click maximize. And here is our larger view of web phone. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back in uh, to just making a call. So let's place a call outbound. So follow my cursor way over here in the lower right hand corner. I'm going to click on the plus sign and I have a few options there. One of them is uh, to create a new conversation like an SMS and chat. That's actually in a different video uh, that we talked about regarding all your various menu options. But here you have a dial pad or new call. So let's click on that. All right, so now I want to place um, an outbound call. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, you can type in the number here or you can use your keyboard. Personally, I like using the keyboard um, because it's just a lot easier. Now, what you're going to notice is at the top of this window, there's very recent call history. And as I type in numbers, it's going to filter through my recent call history, but it's also going to filter through my contacts and try to find somebody that matches the number that I'm looking for. So as an example, let's say that I want to put in, um, let's see, 1007. It wasn't in my recent call history, but if you look over here, that's Yala's extension. So it finds me, finds that for me, which is super helpful. And I can see that she is idle and therefore placing a call to where her should go through just fine, um, assuming she's at her desk. Okay, let's do something a little different. Um, let's type in a phone number, like a full phone number. I'm just going to use this one here, 214-662. And then 0384, 0384. Okay, so it typed in that number. There aren't any matches, which is fine. And I am going to place that call. The call is actually ringing. Um, you may not be able to hear it, but it is ringing. Um, and it's going to a smartphone that I have. And I'm going to answer that. And so we don't get any feedback. I'm going to put both of these in mute. Okay, so it was an outbound call. Uh, because I don't have this contact saved anywhere or this number, it's just showing me the, uh, the caller ID number and then the duration of the call. And these are all my various call handling options. The cool thing about this window is whether you're, it's an inbound call or an outbound call, you get all the same call handling options. So you don't have to, in your mind, uh, try to figure out which feature works with which state. It's all available for you. Now, as you saw, um, I just put this call on mute and you can, should be able to see that it's a lighter blue so you can tell it's enabled. I can also put the call on hold, which I'm going to show you. Use the dial pad. The transfer, add call, and switch phone, um, add call ultimately leads to a three-way conference. I'm going to talk about those in a different video uh, because there's a few more steps um, in different scenarios I want to show you. It'll take a, a little bit longer. Uh, so that's in a different video. And then, of course, contacts. And if I click under more, there's two things. One is starting a recording. Now, notice when I clicked on that, it has a little red dot. Uh, so let's go ahead and put the call on hold. And when that happens, pretty straightforward, it simply says on hold. I can tell you that uh, music on hold is playing to the caller which of course is normal. Now, if I wanted to, I could click here on the little minus sign and kind of dock this window over here while I have that person on hold um, because I've been talking to this person and they asked me for something for which I don't understand. So I'm gonna go over here to Mark as an example and I'm going to send him a internal chat that says, um, what is the uh, shipping cost of that device, you know, whatever that is supposed to be. All right, so Mark um, is going to get this text. Now, 
just like we talked about in our previous video, I can tell by the icon here that he actually doesn't have his uh, e-console up, so he's not going to get this in a timely manner um, because he doesn't do that. But the point is that I'm on a call, I have that call on hold, and even if I didn't have that call on hold, I could still go over to my contacts and start a internal chat with another employee. I could actually even start an SMS chat with somebody who's outside the building somewhere, um, a completely different third party. And I can have all that here displayed and I can hop around between the, um, the different uh, views. That's why I like using the larger view, um, which places all these cards in an easy to reformat. So let's get back over here to the held call. To get this to pop back up, you just click on more and you can see it brings it up. I'm gonna take this person off hold and uh, I'm going to, let's see, what else should I show you? We did recording, oh, hide call. Hide call is just putting it in this minimize view and then you click on that again to bring it forward. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hang up from this call and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a few different things. So end that, I'm actually gonna close this. So that was an outbound call that we just saw, but there are various other ways you can place an outbound call. I can go to my contacts. Any of these contacts that has a number, voicemail, call history, anything that has a number, you can call out on it. So Zach, for example, I open this up and I can actually place an outbound call to Zach, boom, and it goes right to him. I'm gonna go ahead and hang up on that because I know he's not there. So let's go back, my little back button. I can go over here to Lisa and say, hey, I need to call Lisa and just click on the phone number, boom, it automatically starts calling her, all right? And um, you can see it uses that same uh, bright blue window with all the same feature, uh, call handling features available. All right, so that's one way uh, to do an outbound call. Uh, let's see, call history. So here, of course, there's numbers associated with your call history. So let's say I click on this one, and again, I can place a call to this person, or maybe I decide to do a chat and I can create a contact from them. So uh, super easy, really great way to manage the people that are calling you. Uh, voicemail, same thing. There's always a number associated with the person who's leaving you a voicemail. So if I clicked over here on this one, um, I can actually place a call to the number associated with this. So let's just do that. And there is the number. Of course, I'm not going to uh, see that through uh, to play that out, but that's another way that you can make an outbound call. So chat and SMS, it seems weird that you would say, well, chat and SMS is text type information, so how could you place an outbound call from them? But again, if we go up here to, let's say, Catherine, click on that, it is going to show up all the text information, but she has a number still associated with her, so if you go over here, you can do a call straight to that number, or It'll, um, it's a way to get to her contact information. So I can place a call to her an extension, to her mobile, and of course I can do um, an email if I wanted to. So there are various ways that you can place an outbound call. All right, so let's actually do an inbound call. Let's get back over to contacts. And let's see, I'm gonna use this phone here. Um, all right, I'm gonna use the same cell phone and I'm gonna place a call. See 1000, so that's 469. There we go. Oh, actually, press call, that would help. Okay, so there's a few things going on here. I'm going to go ahead and answer this call really quick. Let me put it on mute so we don't get feedback because I want to show you this pop up. So, one of the things um, that we talk about in the overview video of WebPhone is when you first start using WebPhone and you launch it, it's gonna ask you to give Chrome permission to use the microphone. Now that we've had our first inbound call, the same Chrome is asking to use or give permission to show notifications. So I wanna do that. You do not have to. You have to give it permission to your microphone, but you do not have to enable for notifications. But let's do that and it's gonna immediately pop up the notification I would have received for this call, okay? So let's do that. Now that I've accepted that, let's go ahead and hang up and do that call again. So I think it'll make a little more sense here. All right, got my uh, pop-up. I'm gonna answer, 
uh, ignore or reject. So again, let's click answer. I'm going to place these on mute. Okay, now notice that because it's an inbound call, I get my full caller ID, name and number, the duration of the call as well, and all the same features that I saw before. So even under here, start recording, or uh, placing the call on hold, or um, you know, docking this in a minimized view, all those same things work, even though it's um, an inbound call. So again, I click on here to bring it forward. Um, I'm gonna take this call, well, actually, I'm just gonna leave it on hold for now. Um, let us go uh, back to an inbound call so that we can see how those other buttons work in your screen. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from this and we're going to place another call. All right, let's do that call one more time. Okay, you've got two buttons here, ignore and reject. I'm going to go ahead and answer that just so the call stays there. Uh, but essentially, the difference between the two is if you choose ignore, it is only going to stop your web phone from ringing. But if you have SIM ring or simultaneous ringing set up because you have multiple devices associated with your extension, it will continue to ring the other devices. So again, uh, ignore is just ignoring or having the soft phone, web phone, ignored the call. If you choose reject, that means that you're rejecting it for all of your devices and it will send uh, that call directly to your voicemail, okay? So ignore is just for web phone and reject is for all of your devices, okay? All right, um, let us go ahead and leave this video at that. I think we're good and uh, check out our other videos where we're gonna be talking in detail about uh, transfer, um, add and switch phone.